Do you have any favorite patents? I was trying to think of an answer to that question while I was asking it to you, and I know that the Amazon one-click checkout process has a patent. Has a patent, and it sounds absurd. It does sound absurd, but it's actually kind of genius because, like, the story behind it, as I heard it, which is obviously not fact-checked. <laughs> Neither it, is my WD-40 story. Yeah. So you're fine. Was uh, you know the the management guy that kind of designed the whole system said, all right, uh, I want one click in order to purchase something. That's such a management thing to say. Yeah, it is. And then they went back and, you know, all the engineers worked on it and they came back and it was like a, you know, four-step process. And he's like, no, 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 you don't understand. I want one click and purchase something. And they went back and, you know, it was like a two or three-step process. You still had to give your shipping information, your credit card and all that stuff. He's like, no, 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 no. One click. <laughs> Software patents in general are always kind of like, eh, is that really something that you should be even able to patent? Like, well, The funny stuff about that is like Apple will patent something insane and then everyone's like, I can't believe it's coming out on the next iPhone. <laughs> like <laughs> Apple patents like, oh yeah, you'll be able to materialize uh, items coming out of the camera. <laughs> and everyone's like, I'm so ready for this. Yeah, but... Uh, if, if you look at like e-commerce sites at the time that Amazon filed their patent, um, it was pretty innovative to like actually save the credit card and all the account information so it didn't really just be one click. I think it's something we take for granted. It is. I mean, it was, yeah. So I definitely screwed up that story, but <laughs> if you do some more research on it, I, I don't know, I thought that was a pretty cool story at least in terms of understanding the patent system and all that kind of stuff. How about accidental mentions? Have you read about anything? They have. I think everyone has. I think it's a very normal, apparently normal way to invent stuff. It's by accident. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely the way you discover stuff. Yeah. I mean, not necessarily entirely by accident, but certainly without a ton of foresight into, like, this will definitely work. Yeah, I think that, you know, sometimes there's uh, obviously a place for, you know, deliberate scientific theory, you know, like when you're working on, I don't know, a new phone. I don't think you're gonna just, like, magically invent something. But you know, I really like 3M as a company because they kind of just make everything. Mm -hmm. And there are some stories of, you know, like accidental invention. Uh, I think the post-it is a accidental invention. Yeah, how did that happen? Uh, so uh, John C. Uh, Posts was... Uh, <laughs> Sound really confident. I like, yeah, because it's real. <laughs> he, um, his wife actually, you know, she was like, "Oh man, I I gotta leave messages for my husband." She had no way to do it, so he made the post-it just like that. That's how they made it. I, I lack confidence in that description. No, it's pretty real. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea if you're telling the truth. I'm not telling the truth. Let's see. I know it was an accidental invention. Was Velcro accidental? It was. But I don't really know the story. But one I do know the story of is the pacemaker. I believe. While, while I researched that, while I confirm my story of the post-it, <laughs> please tell me about the pacemaker. Well, the pacemaker was actually invented in Buffalo at your alma mater, oh, University cool. of Buffalo. Um, I actually don't remember the guy's name, but the story goes that he was reaching for a resistor because he was trying to make a little verification circuit working on something related to the human heart, and he grabbed the wrong resistor. I think he was going for like a 10K and he grabbed a one mega ohm. And when he hooked it all up, he noticed the signal was essentially the same period as the human heartbeat. And he found like by strictly controlling the current, he could kind of make that same signal and use that electrical impulse to restart the heart when it stops. 
and that's the story, how it goes, at least. So, I have the history of the post-it. Oh, is anything good? Yeah, yeah, so it was an accident. Mm -hmm. And this one's kind of cool, because, you know, like, you talked about the pacemaker and how, you know, hey, this thing makes, like, a, a heartbeat. I could, I could use that for people who, who are having issues with their heartbeat. Like, that's a very obvious, you know, I've made a thing and here's its application. You know what I like about that story, though, is because you can kind of put yourself in that situation. Like, he went and grabbed the resistor, put the circuit together, he's looking at it in a oscilloscope, probably. And he's like, all right, uh, that's not right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put this in the human body. <laughs> I don't think it jumped right to there. He's like, oh, what does this look like? You know, some pattern recognition, kind of like, oh, yeah, that looks like a human Where art. have I seen that before? But... I hope that the first thought was, oh, no. Not again. <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> no, I'm gonna get... He's gonna yell at me. Uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, what, what's, what's the story of the post -it? So like I was saying, the pacemaker, you know, it's like, oh, this thing kind of looks like the human heartbeat. Mm -hmm. it's, it's probably do something with the human heart. Uh, 1968. Dr. Spencer Silver, a scientist at 3M, which is probably one of the best jobs in the world. Because <laughs> you just get to do, I think you get to do whatever you want and it gets made into a product. Yeah, so anyway, scientist at 3M uh, accidentally created a low-tack, reusable, pressure-sensitive adhesive, you know, like we all do. Yep. And it says, for five years, he promoted his solution without a problem. So he made a thing and didn't know. Uh, that sounds like a lot of startup pitches. <laughs> Solution without a problem. <laughs> hey, I've invented this thing. Oh, like, well, what, uh, who do you see uh, using this? No, you don't understand. I've invented this thing. <laughs> yeah. So who, who came up with the actual application? Then? Um, a colleague who attended one of his seminars, oh, nice. Art Fry, came up with the idea of using the adhesive to anchor his bookmark in his book. Ah. Uh, Fry then utilized 3M's officially sanctioned to develop the idea. And the color, also chosen by accident, as the lab next door to the post-it team only had yellow scrap paper. Oh, that's perfect. That's, so the whole thing, <laughs> the entire thing is, oh, apparently I'm also done. I, I just finished as well. <laughs> the entire like creation of the post-it is just like, Oh, I've accidentally created this adhesive. Oh, I've put it on my bookmark. Oh, it's yellow because that's what we had. Which I think is a great story. It is great. I mean, it's kind of a common story, too. If you think, like, why is it this way? Uh, because it is. That's what I had lying around. So we've built our Lego kits, talked about some inventions, accident inventions, fictional inventions. Patents. Patents. And I'm sure that in my lifetime there are going to be some very odd patents and some really cool inventions. I but sure hope so. And vice versa. Thanks for joining us. Uh, if you liked this video, give it a like. If you disliked it, I guess you can do that too. That's an invention. I'm <laughs> sure those are patented. Oh, uh, you think those are patented? I. What part of know. YouTube's interface is patented? Don't know. There's got to be a lot of it, but I, I think so. Know. Fair enough. Why don't you find out? Yeah, and tell us in the comments below. Cool. All right. Do our homework for us. Yeah. Uh, stay tuned for some more uh, video content. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. Check us out on Facebook, where we're definitely going to post videos of us playing with this kind of stuff. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Ah! <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Thank you. All right. <laughs> I think that's a good outro. Fair enough.